Now that you're familiar with the different parts of a layout object, let's create one in code. Open Xcode and create a new project. Under the iOS category on the top left, select Single View App. Let's call this project Collection View. It's pretty vague, but we're not building anything specific just yet. Make sure the language is Swift and that you've selected Storyboard for the user interface. Next, uncheck the last three options. We won't be using any of these in our project. Click Next and save the project. I'm just going to save mine to the desktop. We're going to start in main.storyboard where you will find an empty view controller scene. Let's add a collection view to the scene from the object library. When you search for a collection view, you should see several results. Make sure you select the collection view and not the collection view controller. Let's size this collection view to fit the entire screen. With the collection view selected, click on the Add New Constraints button in the Auto Layout submenu. That's the third icon from the right at the very bottom of the screen. On the modal that appears, select the top, left, bottom, and right constraints and give it all a value, a constant value of zero. Make sure you also check that the Constrain to Margins option is unchecked since you want the collection view to extend to the edges of the screen. And then add the constraints. Now we need to configure a layout object. If you navigate to the Attributes Inspector, you'll see in a second section here a layout attribute defined with a value of flow. There are two ways to create layout objects. Flow layouts, which are the old school way I mentioned earlier, and compositional layouts. Flow layouts can be created right here inside a storyboard, but for compositional layouts, we need to write code. On the jump bar, that's this thin bar right above the storyboard editor, click on the add editor on right button to add another editor. With this editor selected, either using the jump bar to navigate or using open quickly, which you can bring up by holding command shift O, go to view controller dot swift. Control drag over from the collection view to the view controller class to create an outlet. Name it collection view. Close out the storyboard editor and inside the view controller class, add a new method named configure layout that returns an instance of UI collection view compositional layout. All of our layout configuration will happen inside this method. When you're done, you want to assign the result to the collection views layout property. Let's go ahead and do that in view did load. Going back to the overview, remember that layout objects are comprised of sections, which contain groups, which contain items. So let's start with the smallest unit, the item. To create an item, we create an instance of the NS Collection Layout Item class. These items don't represent the actual item that goes on screen. Instead, think of it as a blueprint that is used when the actual data is provided. When creating an item, you need to provide a size. Now, you might think this is simply a floating point value for width and height, but we are actually going to provide instances of NS Collection Layout Size. This class allows us to define a height and width as an instance of NS Collection Layout Dimension. While this seems cumbersome, in practice, it's actually quite flexible. NS Collection Layout Dimension allows you to define a measurement either as a fractional value or an absolute value or an estimated value. What does that mean? Let's work through this in code. 
you're going to create an instance of NS collection layout size and assign it to a constant named item size. Each of the arguments takes values of type NS collection layout dimension. If you enter a period, Xcode should autocomplete to show you the options available. The first option, absolute, allows us to define a floating point value as an absolute size. Absolute is the most straightforward to understand. The item will have the exact width value specified here. The second value, estimated, is useful when dealing with items that display content. By providing an estimated size, you allow the collection view to initially draw the item, which can then be adjusted to the size of the content it contains. Fractional height and fractional width are the most interesting and allow you to specify a value as a fractional component of its parent container. For example, if you specify fractional width with a value of 0.1, you're indicating that you want the width of the item to be 10% of the width of the group. Remember, items go in groups, so group is the parent container. Any value between 0 and 1 is a valid argument here. It's also important to note that you can use either fractional width or fractional height for either of these arguments. So if you were to change this to fractional height, you're indicating that you want the width of the item to be 10% of the height of the group. It might seem complicated, but it just allows you to specify a relationship between the height or width of an item with the height or width of its parent. You want to configure the collection view to resemble a table view which means that you want each item to take up the full width of the screen. To do that, you're going to specify that the width of the item should be the full width of its parent. By setting a value of one, you're indicating that it needs to be 100% of the parent's width. Let's do the same for height. Okay, so after quite a bit of talking, you've got an item size. You can now use that to create an item. Remember, items are instances of NS collection layout item, and they take an item size as an argument. Now that you have an item, you need to add it to a group. Like items, groups also need a size. NS Collection Layout Size is a flexible class, and you can use it to specify the size of the group as well. Since the sizes are specified either as absolute values or as a size relative to its container, the collection view can resolve all of these sizes at runtime. You're going to define a fractional width of one for the group's width so that, like the item, it takes up the full width of its parent. For the height, this time, you're going to give it an absolute height of 44 points. Now that you have a group size, let's create a group. Groups are instances of NS collection layout group and must specify an axis, size, and the items it contains. You're going to create a horizontal group of the size that we defined. So in this layout, each group will resemble a table view row with items inside of it. You're probably like, wait, what? At this point? So let's walk through this. Let's imagine for a second, you have a data set with a grand total of one item that you want to display on screen. Remember our hierarchy. Sections contain groups, groups contain items. By default, the section is going to fill up the entire width. For its height, on the other hand, the section relies on its nested containers to inform it of its size. 
Sections contain groups, so next a group goes in here. You've specified that the group's width is a fractional width of its container with a value of 1, which means it will be the same width as the section. Next, the group has an absolute height of 44, so it will be 44 points tall. That's it for the group. Now the items it contains. This one's straightforward. The item has both a fractional width and a height of 1.0, so it takes up the entire height and width of the container. So you have items that take up the entire group, which means that if you want to display one item, it would look like this. What if you wanted to display more than one item? Well, each item will be contained within its own group, all of which live inside the section. You've also specified this relationship in the initializer for the group, where you're implicitly saying that the group's sub items will be a single item. Remember that groups are simply flexible containers that hold items. As you'll explore later, you can customize them even further. Now that you have an item and group, you can create a section and return a layout object. With the layout configured, you can move to the next piece creating the cell that will display the data.